This video is on how to do exponents, and I'm not a big fan of memorizing the laws of exponent. I really think it's worthwhile going watching some of the earlier videos about the why of the exponent law, so you can always come back to them instead of just trying to memorize some rules that don't make any sense, and you're not going to remember later on when you need them. So, um, so I'm going to use the laws of exponents, but once again, go back to some of those previous ones to kind of really get the, the why of it, because that's really critical. So looking at this problem here, I can see I have x squared times, you know, x to the fourth raised to the negative second power. Now when you're doing this, um, you're going to need to get rid of the parentheses first. So this is a power to a power, and so when you have a power to a power, you're going to basically take your exponents and you're going to multiply them. So four times uh, negative two. So this is x squared times now x to the negative 8. And then when you have this here, um, when you have exponents um, multiplied this way, you add the exponents. So this is x to the second plus negative 8. So this becomes x to the negative 6. Once again, the other thing with negative exponents is, as I like to say, it's location, location, location. So if you see a negative exponent, you could also write this as changing the location. So imagining this is like over 1, you can change the location to the denominator. So it's in the numerator, change the location to the denominator, and when you change the location, the sign on the ex of the exponent changes. So now this would be 1 over x to 6. So these two things here are equivalent. Now this next problem here, y to the negative second times 1 over y squared times y to the third. I think there's a couple ways you could approach this. One way is making everything as fractions. So I'm going to start with that way. So this is kind of rewriting everything as without any negative exponents. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. So y to the negative second. Once again, I see a negative exponent, location, location, location. So it's what I'm going to do is I take that y to the negative second. So I'm going to basically have 1. I'm going to basically uh, do it bit by bit for you. Okay. So negative exponent, instead of in the numerator, okay, so I'm going to basically write this. I'm going to put in the denominator. When I change the location, it now becomes positive. So this is the same, 1 over y squared. The other part is 1 over y squared. And like I said, y to the third is the same as y to the third over 1. So multiplying this out, 1 times 1 times y to the third is y to the third over y squared times y t to the second. Once again, when you multiply exponents, I mean when you multiply, yeah, things with exponents, you just add the exponents and then times 1 would still be the same. So this is y to the third over y to the fourth. And then um, with this you could either write it all out or using your laws of exponents. So the thing here is you're trying to realize where the y is, so it's in the denominator, 1 over y. If you had used the laws of exponents, when you divide, you subtract exponents of y to the third minus 4, which is y to the negative first. So these two things are equivalent. Now. The second method, so I said one method was to do it where you don't have any negative exponents, so I've just rewritten everything as fractions. The other way is let me just deal with negative exponents. So negative exponents are okay, and I want no fractions. So I'm going to rewrite this problem. So here's this one's fine, y to the negative second. I'll kind of put a bar there. And I don't want any fractions, so I'm going to rewrite it with negative, with the negative exponents if it's in the denominator. So I'm going to change the location. When I change the location to the top, I also change the sign of the exponent. The other one's already in the numerator, y to the third. And then when I multiply exponents with the same base, I add the exponents. So y to the negative second plus negative 2 plus 3. So I get y to the negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3, so negative 1. So I get the same answer, which one would hope, since it's the same problem. <laughs> okay, problem number five. So this one here, um, you kind of have to understand, so once again, dealing with parentheses first. 
3 to the 3rd times 3 to the 5th. What does 1 3rd squared mean? It means 1 3rd times 1 3rd. So 3 to the 3rd times 3 to the 5th times 1 over 3 to the 2nd. Um, once again, I can kind of do this strategy above where I have everything as either fractions or I rewrite stuff as negative exponents if, sorry, you can't see that, um, or I rewrite stuff, re re stuff as negative exponents. So I'm going to just stick with a kind of fraction piece. I'm going to leave it as fractions. So I can see 3 to the 3rd times 3 to the 5th would become 3 to the 3rd plus 5, adding exponents, over 1 times 1 times 3 to the 2nd, 3 to the 2nd. Simplifying, I get 3 to the 8th over 3 squared. And when I'm doing division, I will subtract exponents. So 3 to the 8th minus 2, which is equal to 3 to the 6th. Okie dokie. So I'm going to do a couple more problems from the checkpoint.